we all know that the relative response factor is very critical terms while it comes to the quantification of impurities. There are several reasons why the impurities are not available in physical form and you have to use some alternative technique that is the relative response factor. You can establish the relative response factor only for once and use the same value forever during the quantification of that impurities. But the estimation of RRF is not free from any challenges. My name is Bhaskar Napte and today we are going to talk about what are the current challenges people are facing while establishment of relative response factor. Now these are the six challenges that we are going to talk as a part of this discussion. Let me zoom in a little so that you can able to see the screen. Okay, so what is the first challenge? No official procedure on estimation of RRF is available. Though we talk about the establishment of RRF, but is there such officially declared procedure available? And answer to this question is absolutely no. There is no such official procedure available for the RRF. So what is proposed over here is the general chapter 621 onto the chromatography can be amended for inclusion of the relative response factor estimation procedure. The second challenge is no guidance in USP on when RRF can't be used. If you look at the Pharma Europa, you will find that if the correction factor is greater than 5, then you cannot use the correction factor. Rather, you have to use the actual impurity standard for its estimation into a given sample. But such kind of guidance is not available into the USP. I do not know whether PHUR is correct in terms of providing this guidance, but this guidance is lacking into the USP. Currently, many terms are in use like relative response factor, response factor, correction factor, etc. And that becomes a lot of confusion in the mind of end user. Now, what is the purpose of using so many terms? And it creates unnecessarily confusion. So what is proposed over here is, can we harmonize all these terms and then replace by a common term, maybe let us say by relative response factor or RRF. Now just to make you understand, from here I am speaking all these. Now these are the five different examples which will probably help you in understanding the different terms used in the USP monograph. If you look at the metriphonate USP monograph, now this is the calculation formula for an impurity where you can find the F factor which is called as the response factor which is into a numerator. The second example is oxantrolone USP monograph proposed into the PF31. Calculate the percentage of each impurity by the below formula and here there is a F which is called as the relative response factor and it is appearing into a denominator. Let us talk about the example number 3 that is the clarithromycin USP monograph and here is the calculation formula. Calculate the percentage of each impurity by the formula where the F which is the correction factor now appearing in a numerator. In example 1 there is a response factor, in example 2 there is a relative response factor and in example 3 the meaning of F is now correction factor. The same factor but multiple meanings and different locations into the calculation formulas. Isn't it confusing? The term F is called as correction factor in the example 3 but is used in the same sense as a response factor in example 1 and a relative response factor in example 2. Let us talk about example number 4 
and in this USP monograph, you will find that the known impurities are determined by this calculation formula, where F is again present in a numerator, which is now called as the relative response factor. F is called the relative response factor, it appears in the numerator in the formula. And the last is the fluorostatin sodium USP monograph. Calculate the percentage of each impurity except for 3 hydroxy. It's okay. And this is the calculation formula. Now, if you look at the F is again appearing into the calculation formula as a relative response factor, but in a numerator. F is called the relative response factor. It appears in the numerator in the calculation formula. And that's where this thought is coming from. Multiple terms, different locations in the calculation formula, this practice needs to be harmonized by replacing by single term so that the people will have a complete understanding of the use of the F or the factor. What is the challenge number four? See, ICH is silent on to the relative response factor. ICH do not talk about the relative response factor. You talk about the ICH validation guideline Q2R1 or the analytical procedure development guideline that is Q14. None of this guideline talks about the establishment of RRF, but we often calculate the RRF during the analytical method validation. So there is urgent need to address the relative response factor by the ICH2. No guidance on decimal places. So, if you look at the USP monographs, you will find the relative response factor with the different digits after decimal places. Some monographs have a one digit, some has two or some has up to five. But there is no as such guidance on it. So, we can refer to understand this particular point to the ICH guideline Q3A or Q3B. Now what this guidance talks about, now they talks about the reporting of impurities and their digits after decimal places. So if impurity is greater than or equal to 1, we can use a 1 digit after decimal place. If the impurity is less than 1%, then the two digits after decimal place can be used. On the similar ground, now this can be proposed. If the RRF is found to be greater than or equal to 1, then you can report it with the one digit after a decimal place. For example, 1.1, 2.2, etc. And similarly, if the RRF is found to be less than 1, then we can report the RRF with two digits after a decimal place for example 0.78 and 0.49 last but not the least now this is the phur guidelines and what phur says that if rrf is between 0.8 to 1.2 consider it as one now let us understand its implication so if your rrf is actually 0.8 but according to PHUR, if you consider the RRF as a 1, you will actually end up reporting the impurities less by 20%. Similarly, in the second scenario, if your RRF is actually 1.2, but as per PHUR, if you consider it as a 1, you are actually going to end up reporting impurities by 20% more. Now these are the consequences of the PHUR guidance. I am sure that you know these are the few points that I thought critical and challenging and in case if there are few more that you believe are challenges in today's time please do in a chat box. Please do comment in a chat box. Thank you so much.